Hey guys, thank you for checking out this episode. We'd love your support by heading to patreon.com forward slash freshly grounded. It really does make a difference in helping us continue making this content. And if not, no stress. Enjoy. Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome to Freshly Grounded episode 183 uh, Guys, before we get into the episode, we all know of the situation uh, currently in Yemen uh, We spoke about it in our last pod- uh, on our last podcast episode And uh, we have teamed up with Human Appeal to be able to hopefully provide 100 emergency packs uh, An emergency pack basically provides uh, a, a family in Yemen with a food parcel, clean water and a hygiene kit To protect them against both the COVID-19 and cholera inshallah um, And the emergency packs, well, <laughs> the emergency packs are £100 each And um, you can donate an emergency pack or help towards an emergency pack by clicking on the link in our bio Please, please, please do that Um, Also, before we get started guys, uh, if you click on one of the links that is also going to be in our bio for Audible um, If you like listening to podcasts, you probably also like listening to audiobooks And right now, if you sign up to Audible with our link, you can get one free audiobook, a whole free credit um, and, uh, And you can do that with the link in our bio, so go ahead this episode is with Rudy Justed. Rudy is a professional uh, footballer who's also a Muslim. Uh, he converted to Islam. And uh, we answer your guys' questions. Rudy's a very transparent guy. And so we speak about money, um, kind of he's ending or he's coming towards the end of his football career now uh, he just finished his contract with Middlesbrough he's also played for Aston Villa for Blackburn and for Cardiff City and uh, we speak all about kind of um, how he uh, dealt with his money uh, in football um, his charity um, uh, how he dealt with negativity uh, in football and uh, some of the ways he's been burnt by like football agents and like financial advisors like I said uh, Rudy is a very very uh, transparent guy and so it's been uh, amazing to have him on so without any further ado this is Fresh Lugandid episode 183 with Rudy Just Dead and welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam huh? I, welcome, I said welcome to Freshly Grounded the, no, after that bit the brand new podcast and after that bit by best friends Faisal and Sam really? Okay, Rudy just said, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa How's everything going, man? Uh, I think I think the first um, this is this is this is only the second time we've met. Yes. How how's it going? But uh, but the, but the first time we had a good connection, so it's the second time many are coming. <laughs> Inshallah, man. Um, you're right. Do you know what? To be honest, I think at that time. I I think my son was like two months old, so I had just I had just become a father, and I think that's what we kind of bonded over because I was I was telling you that I have my son Zakaria, and I think you were mentioning that you had a son Zakaria a few months before. Yes, yes, my son is two years old now, and oh, his name Zakaria. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. And how how are the kids doing? Uh, the kids are doing fine. It's more the parents. It's been a very challenging <laughs> time for us. You know, three we've got three kids. Alhamdulillah. Uh, but uh, it's a lot of energy in the house. Uh, lucky we've got a, a, a nice house with garden. So during those time, you know, the lockdown, it was much easier. But the kids are just like uh, full of energy. And uh, with my wife, uh, we look forward to go back to France and uh, give them to the grandparents a bit, you know. Mm-hmm. So you're currently in the UK? I'm currently in the UK, but I'm moving abroad the 1st of July. Okay, nice. And is that going to be permanent? Uh, but I'm out of contract this summer, uh, okay. so my contract finished at the 30th. Uh, I will be looking for a new challenge. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be in UK or abroad, so I'm going back to uh, home for me, and uh, and inshallah, I will find a new challenge very soon. Inshallah. Well, um, that's that's an interesting thing to actually talk about, Rudy, because I remember when, when we did meet and I was asking you some questions backstage. So for, for the, those listening who don't know, uh, Rudy and I met at an event, uh, I think maybe December or January, um, when uh, a kind of there, was a, there was a small event put together uh, for kind of Muslim uh, professionals in the in a footballing space, uh, Rudy himself. Uh, was uh, at the time uh, playing for uh, Middlesbrough, and you're saying you're just out of contract now, right? Yes, um, I, won my, I did my last game last Saturday, and uh, it was my uh, finish now. Amazing, and uh, and and Rudy was v- extremely. Um, 
like generous in his in 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 kind of uh in his information and i think that one thing that when you're kind of uh interviewing people or, or when you're at an event with uh, with people who kind of have a, a torch or a light shone on them like yourself uh you can find that and rightly so they they perhaps just give like small bits of information to i suppose to protect their brand and themselves uh but you you are very very generous with with kind of the information that you were giving and you're being very very transparent and one of the things that you mentioned backstage to me was about the fact that you're very much aware that while in like human life you're very very young uh in kind of the the, the sports world you'd be considered kind of um older than average I, I, i'm trying to be like polite about it but i'm well, also putting your words you can use any word no worries uh, yeah you know in the football industry when you get over 30 years old you become the the old host right so uh and you you feel it straight away not not physically because obviously uh, between 29 and 30 it doesn't make a huge difference but uh, when teams are like asking information about you and checking everything they would prefer to bet on a, a young player with less experience and maybe less quality but in the future they've got probably a big chance to sell him than taking someone now uh, at 30 years old or 31 years old and probably the last contract he's going to have so yeah, it's a financial industry, uh, football, you know, it's like any uh, any business, any businesses. So obviously at one point they checked uh, um, what's the best for the clubs and not for the player, obviously. And uh, if they decide that they prefer to give uh, more experience to a young player than the older player, uh, it becomes a, a, a difficult situation uh, when you're over 30 years old. Yeah, so the thing that you mentioned backstage was that... Um, you said that you're very much aware of it and because of that you made sure that you set things in motion uh beforehand uh kind of in the financial realm to make sure that you don't just leave football and then you don't have anything going for yourself you wanted to make sure you set things up so have you always been like that when you started football straight away were you always of the mindset that i have to be realistic i have to think long term in the future about myself and my family a lot of times you you see people who perhaps have success early on and they don't think about that until very late and then perhaps um they've ended up shooting themselves in the foot no i'm not I'm not going to lie about it. When I was young and I, uh, I started to earn my first money, uh, I just spent it. Uh, cars, uh, clubs, because at this time I wasn't Muslim. Uh, clubs and party and, uh, you know, uh, all this kind of stuff you can spend your money on. Uh, it's when I probably uh, had my first child that I realized that it was just about my wife and me. And uh, now I was, like, responsible for someone else. So I have to take those responsibilities uh, as a as a grown up uh, man. So I decided like to look after my finance uh, a bit more and um, and probably have some uh, project uh, going on and have a vision about what I want to do after football to make sure uh, every action I was taking was uh, uh, towards these goals. Uh, so yeah, I would say like yeah, 22, 23 years old. I starting, you know, it wasn't like uh, uh, very very clear, but I started to. To have uh, uh, maybe more, uh, I was more conscious about uh, uh, the future, um, and I would say like 25, 26. That's where I really started like to to think about it properly and to make sure everything was in order for football. That at least, because I'm not lying to you, I didn't have a career where I can say after football I'm fine for life. Obviously, I've got few years when I like I would say I've got few good years where I can like just sit and uh, enjoy it, but that's not what I want to do. Um, so I need to prepare myself for the rest of uh, my life, you know. Uh, I earn good money. Uh, I think uh, compared to the average uh, worker, it's amazing money, but in football, I won't say I'm a bigger, bigger earner, you know. I'm happy with what I've got, alhamdulillah, you know. I don't, I'm not, like, uh, asking for more or less, you know. I'm happy with what I've got, but it was important for me to plan something, uh, to make sure I don't uh, end up in a situation when I've got nothing and I'm, I'm lost, you know, and I'm uh, the, the back against the wall. So p perhaps for people who are listening who are in the position that you were in when you were 26 in that they have found that they have quite a bit of uh, disposable income and they want to be clever about it now. Um, did you seek advice or was it kind of all self-taught, like the, the, the where to put your money and, and how to do it? 
Okay, so when I started uh, in the academy, uh, I started I started to earn money when I was like 12, 13 years old. Oh wow! So yeah, I was one of the first in where I was in the academy to have a contract with because it was few clubs wanted to sign me. So when I chose the club, they had to give me a good condition. Oh, it was yeah. a bit of money. It wasn't it wasn't amazing, but it was something good, you know. But I spent all of it. No worries. Uh, then, uh, I don't think there's a 13-year-old yeah, boy on this planet who uh, would save money <laughs> if they're getting paid. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But if my son earned money at 13 years old, I will make sure he saves money because oh, now really? I know what they what it is. But, you know, I'm not, I don't come from a family where we had money uh, to save or to, uh, to invest. So it wasn't my parents didn't know, didn't know anything about it, you know. So, the, yeah, the clubs put me in touch with the financial advisor. But then when I get older, I realized that finance, this financial advisor was thinking about his bonuses more than the money I was saving. Wow. So he was like doing some kind of investments more to, uh, uh, to reward him than just for myself. So I changed. Then the second one, uh, who is in trouble with the, the French uh, uh, authority because he he tricked a uh, few players in the same way, you know, with some kind of investments. But at the end, uh, it was it was empty. There is no investment made, you know. So I just took the money. So there's like few players like end up with no money at the end of their career. Lucky, uh, what I, lucky what I did, it's all right. I didn't lose money. Uh, I didn't earn money, but I didn't lose anything. Uh, so then I decided, you know what, it's better to... Um, teach yourself um, and learn about it yourself than they just trust everyone. So I, st- I like to read. I like to read a lot. And uh, so I start to read uh, books and listen podcasts on financial advisor and uh, try to uh, teach myself about it. Uh, I won't say like I'm a, I'm a, I'm very, uh, I won't say that I, I know the, 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 the financial world very well, but now I know what I'm doing. And uh, to be fair, we, it's not that hard uh, to invest like in properties or stuff like this if you follow uh, follow the rule, you know. Um, so then, uh, yeah, I start to teach myself. Uh, I've got someone still working for me, you know, for tax and stuff like this because uh, that's, you need to take someone, you know, when you got some kind of money uh, because there is a few things to do. Uh, but yeah, on a daily basis, you know, it's, you save, you invest a bit and you save the rest and you spend a bit because you have to still enjoy what you're doing and you earn the money you've got, uh, you deserve this. So at least you have to, uh, uh, enjoy a bit with it. But yeah, I think, uh, the, the, the part where you have to learn something by yourself, um, it's very important because at least you know what you're talking about. Because when you just listen to what people are saying to you, 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 you trust someone, maybe you give, you give him the trust, but you don't know what he's got behind his head. So, so you know, that's, that's so interesting. There's a, the, it's so interesting that you shared that experience because um, I don't know if you've ever heard of a book called I Will Teach You To Be Rich by a guy called Ramit Sethi. So Ramit Sethi is um, a financial advisor who is uh, good friends with uh, a guy called Tim Ferriss, who's very well known. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, Tim Ferriss had Ramit on his on his podcast. And uh, in in Ramit Sethi's book, he has an entire section of his book where he basically speaks against financial advisors. And he basically says that exactly the experience that you spoke about he said that their intention is how that how they can use your money to invest in places where it will just benefit them and uh, i've never been in a position where i've um had a financial advisor or or been in a position where i can get financial advisor but at the same time i i i heard that section of the book and it just completely put me off uh, ever going down that route because of that so it's interesting hearing that in his book and then seeing someone in real life who's actually experienced that yeah, that, that's a business for them. That's their business. That's how, that's how they earn money. So obviously, there's a, a balance need to be like uh, fine. But at one point, it's like the greed, which is like a very big thing in the world. Unfortunately, the greed take a big part. So if he's got the, the choice to make the, the players or the people earning a bit more than him or earning the same money, but him, he can earn a bit more, you're going to take it. It's a bit the, the same kind of things with agents, football agents, you know, sometimes. They are there to advise you, but in the same time, they 
get money from you, you know. So it's it's at the end of the day, you know, it's uh, you have to as long as you're happy with what you've got and you know what's gonna happen, it's easier to take, you know, it's easier to understand and to uh, to move on. Yeah, it sounds like a world where you really have to have your head screwed on. Um, mm. I've got uh, I've got some questions, Rudy. I, I I actually put it out on our on our socials uh, that we're gonna be um, doing an interview, and um, I thought that quite often how these how these kind of uh, discussions work. I try not to call them interviews because I I feel like it's more of like a back and forth discussion rather than an interview. But mm. how these discussions normally work is 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 myself and the guest having a having a conversation. Um, but I know from my past experience with you how transparent you are, and um, so I thought it would be great to put out a question basically to our followers to say, look, if you could ask a uh, a pro footballer who's a Muslim anything what would you ask and so i've kind of filtered them down and um so for the first time i think this will be like more audience centered because of that uh also because no bec- like i said because i know how much um how much information kind of you have to give out and so i'm going to kind of go through these and, and and fire some questions at you feel free to let me know if you don't want to answer any of them uh, but i'm going to try my best to filter them as well um so that we don't have to kind of go through that um Let's start with one that we had actually come up on the event as well, which was about praying. So how does praying work um, at the club, during training, during matches? Um, uh, did, you, did your club uh, or clubs know about the fact that you need to pray and, and fast and all that kind of stuff? And were they accommodating towards it? Yes. Yeah, so every club I've been uh, since I'm in England, uh, I let them know that I was a Muslim and uh, that I need to... Uh, uh, to pray and eat halal and uh, uh, practice my faith. So they've been very um, great with it. They understand the situation. They were open-minded. So they made sure they made sure that I, wa- I had everything sorted for me. So most of the, uh, when I was at Cardiff, uh, they let me pray and the, the meat was halal. Then I moved to Blackburn. It, they had a mosque in the stadium, so it was much easier. Then I moved to Villa, they made a, a small room for us. It was a few Muslims, so made a room for us. And then I moved to Middlesbrough, and they made a room also in the stadium for us to make sure we can pray. So, alhamdulillah, everything was great. Uh, same with the chef, make sure I had my halal meat every uh, away game and home um, and at the training ground for lunch time. So, alhamdulillah, in England, everything was great about religion and everything. So... I could like practice my faith, I could pray, I could um, do Ramadan, I could do everything, they were open with it, it's just my choice. If at one point I start to be tired, I just let them know and they make sure they they, uh, they change the training just for me. So no, alhamdulillah, everything was great for this. Oh wow. Um, mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm not going to comment much on that answer because I've heard that um, when we had it, we had a lengthy discussion about that because I was so intrigued about that exact same thing when we, when we met each other last. So I'll move on to the next question, which says... Um, how how hard is it not to fall into the life of money and fame when you're in the position that you're in? The good thing for my my personal uh, life, my personal uh, uh, story is that I'm not born Muslim. So before I turned Muslim, I had tested all of this, you know, uh, spending money on cars, clubs, uh, going out with friends. I was drinking alcohol, uh, not not a, not a lot, but when I was going out, I was drinking alcohol and everything. So I know what it do, what it, what it can do to your uh, to your body. I know what it can do to your performance. I know what that can do to your personal life. And uh, so at one point, and I was starting to read about Islam and friends, and met my wife and. My previous agent was a, a Muslim, and he, he teach me a lot. He talked me a lot about this. So I realized that it wasn't good for my body. It wasn't good for my health. It wasn't good for my, my football. So when I turned Muslim, it was easy for me to stop it because I knew the damage it can, uh, I can have with it. So I just move on and spend the life. But I understand for those people who like born Muslim, then suddenly they've got the fame, they've got the money, they've got everything. Uh, you can have uh, this a period of your time where you think, or oh, maybe I could enjoy it, you know. But I think at some point when you've got the face and your people around you just make you realize that now stay who you are. That's very important to stay who you are and to keep 
to keep it grounded, you know. And then, then you know, uh, money and fame is just temporary. Uh, you can enjoy it as much as you can for uh, for a month, two months, but then you realize that doesn't make you really happy, you know, because then you you start to meet people uh, who want to be with you just for your fame or just for your money. So you lose the your, the real friend you've got. You you lose the, the real like roots you've got in the world and uh, the, the happiness you can get. It's, I understand for the, the audience, it's much easier to say that on my for my for my kid because I've got I had the fame, I've got I had the money, so obviously uh, it's easier to to say that. But it doesn't make you more happy. Seriously, I'm talking serious. It doesn't make you more happy to have like more money or more. Of course, it gives you freedom. That's the main part. It gives you freedom, so you uh, you can make any choice. You can take care of your family. So that that's amazing. But Stay grounded, keep your faith, and then the, the, the happiness is going to be enough. You know, we we had recently about a month ago, we had uh, Arnout Danjuma uh, on the podcast, who he plays uh, for Bournemouth. He's about 22 year, two years old. I think he just got signed uh, last year, I think. And he was talking to us about the Premier League and, and stuff like that. And um, it's interesting because he has a very similar story to you. And he was mentioning that he, you know, didn't grow up with necessarily uh, a lot of money at all. And then so when he came into it and... Um, all of a sudden, he's, you know, 19 years old, 20 years old, getting signed in the Premier League and, and, and making, you know, more money than he could have imagined. He very quickly came to the realisation that that money doesn't equal happiness. And um, I think from him, it, it sounded like a, a lot of his grounding came from his mum, uh, from his family, just like the morals that they set in from early life. And to now, like he, I remember like, um, like I hadn't even uh met him i still haven't met him so we've only spoke on the phone a few times then we did a podcast like this because of coronavirus we did it over skype and he said um he said look you're my muslim brother and um anything you need uh or any uh, just let me know because right now i'm in a position where i can i can help and um not everybody's be able to be in this position and i was shocked because i, I he he sounded like he genuinely just wanted to do anything that was possible to help other Muslims, um, and 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 then so when I inqu inquired about why he was like that, why he wants to help, um, and 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 for the clarification, for the sake of clarification, because there'll be a lot of people watching this, we uh, we did mention that we 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 don't um, want anything, alhamdulillah. But uh, the, it was it was it was what he said, which which you know took me by surprise. Because he had never met me, because he doesn't know me very well, and um, and he said that he's grown up in an environment where he hasn't had much, and then he's he's been put in this position, and he realised that while he does enjoy things, he also realises that money just hasn't given him the happiness and his happiness comes from salah his happiness comes from and again like yourself he said that his club very much so accommodates for his islam so um it's very interesting always seeing well alhamdulillah we, we i think we all can say that if we're watching this podcast or, we, or we're on it that we all live very privileged lives compared to kind of the majority of the world and, and i think that um uh, that's kind of like a given but to hear from someone like himself and someone like yourself to say that look uh, money does not buy happiness i think it's quite a reassuring um sentiment mm -hmm. now the, the money doesn't buy you happiness but it, it gives you the freedom to make things that can make you happy so obviously that's much easier to have it you cannot lie about it because it's too easy to say our ah, money doesn't but money gives you the freedom to do what you want to make people happy or to make yourself happy so then that's up to you to choose what you want to do with this freedom you know, so that's why you, that's a personal point of view, but I get my happiness taking care of my family, helping people to have a better life, uh, give away uh, my time, my energy or my money sometimes to uh, to help people to grow in a better environment and to give them the chance to, to get a better position in life. And then after that, they can help people around them and people around them and people around them. So that's how you grow the, the tree. And then the seeds come back and people, you can grow more tree, you know, that's how you, you build the community and you, and you make sure the community uh, get this, this kind of a, a better environment and better surrounding. So, so let's talk about the giving because um, I, I'm intrigued to find out a bit more about a project that I've been seeing you kind of push a lot more actively recently, which is uh, the charity. I'm, I don't want to butcher the name, J Jarama? 
Jarama, that's great. Oh, yeah, good. Jarama. Great. So, so what, what does Jarama mean and, um, and what is it? So Jarama means thank you in uh, Fula language. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, Fula language is like uh, one of the uh, different kind of language you get in, uh, in West Africa, but even around Africa. Um, so it means thank you. Uh, so so we, we decided with my wife, uh, Hawa, uh, to create this charity uh, to help uh, like uh, people from West Africa, uh, Benin, Guinea, and then we can go to Senegal and Ghana. To uh, the first project is to build uh, an orphan to take care of ten kids uh, to give them, as I said, you know, the the the, the chance to uh, to grow up in a better environment, um, to have education, to uh, um, to make sure they can get uh, the chance to start what they've got in mind, the dreams they've got in the in the, bet- the better way, you know. Then that's up to them to work for it, or that's up to them to. Uh, to give everything they've got to reach it. So it's, it was important for us to, to give back to the community. So, so that's why we decided to do something uh, to start. It was a, a bit uh, like the, the vision we had was a bit uh, difficult, but then we realized it starts from the, it starts from the youth, it starts from the kids. If you give the kids the right mentality, the right environment, when they grow, they're going to do the same. And then that's how you grow the community and you make the environment better for the whole community. So that's the first project. We uh, we just signed the contract with the architect because because of the COVID-19, uh, everything was pushed back a bit. So the building we should start in uh, three weeks time, inshallah, and then it's going to take around five five to eight months to uh, to be to be built. And then uh, we aim to uh, welcome the kid in the house for January, inshallah. Wow. So that, that's great. That's a great project for us. We're really like uh, happy to start it. Even for our kids, you know, it's good to see that uh, if they're going to have more brothers and sisters now because we want to look after 10 kids to start. And they're very happy uh, about it. We try to bring on board all the family we've got. So uh, the people in, t- in charge of the community management is a, uh, a cousin. Uh, we've got people in charge of raising money in France. It's my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, my wife's sister. Uh, we've got uh, we've got someone in London who's now part of the family. His name is Ebadu, Ebadu Rama. Uh, he's he's going to be in charge of raising money for Jarama UK. Um, now we start, we we try to build a team around us with people with the same vision and the same will to help others. What's the is there like an online link for it that that, that exists now? Yes, we've got the website. It's www.jarama.org. Okay, uh, I'm going to put that in the, the bio f- of this uh, episode. Okay. Hopefully. So, so right now, um, if people okay. want to... Jarama. Are we there? If you want to donate, you go on the website. There's a button you can donate, so then you can choose if you want to. Uh, uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Hello? Okay. So I said, yeah, you've got the website. You go on the website. You can choose if you want to make a, a one-off donation or a monthly donation. Uh, any amount is uh, accepted. Then uh, um, it's through PayPal. But you, you don't need to have a PayPal account. You can just like uh, put to a debit card uh, or credit card number and the donation is going to be made. Um, no, that's, that's simple as that. During Ramadan, people have been very, very uh, generous. So we managed to raise a good amount of money, alhamdulillah. And that's why we can start now the building. And w- 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 the money that people were to donate, if people donate money now from watching this podcast, will the money go towards the building of this uh, orphanage in Benign? Yes, the, the, the money we raise now is just for the, the, the building of the orphan. So we need uh, 60 million uh, CFAs, the money over there. It's like around 75,000 euros. Okay. Uh, currently, currently, we've got uh, 50,000 euros. Oh, amazing. But we're aiming to raise, yeah, amazing. We're aiming to raise the rest of the money uh, uh, very soon, like through, uh, gener- through people and through contacts we've got. Um, then we need like fifty thousand a year to run the to run the orphans, 
uh, like the food, the insurance, the schools, the people working, the security, the the driving, everything to uh, make the, the the house run. It's fifty thousand a year. So every donation is going to uh, the, the charity and to make the orphans running. Um, when you do the donation, we've got your email address, so we k- will keep you informed uh, about the the progression of the charity through pictures and through text. So you're part of the the community, you're part of the newsletter. Uh, that's what we want to build. We just want, we don't want to build just like a charity where people just give money and then they don't know what's happened behind. We want to keep everybody informed, like to create like a big family, the Jarama family, and uh, everybody like the big. Then it's gonna be like a stuff where we can choose a random people on our on our newsletter to invite him in uh, in Benin to spend time with the kid, uh, you know this kind of thing. We want to keep people like uh, um, um, I would say like uh, uh, part of it, you know. We want to them to give them a chance to be part of a uh, a new project. And the, the charity is just not me and my wife. We created it, but we want to open it to everyone uh, who's got the the will to give and to help other people. So uh, if we talk a bit about kind of like life after football, um, is, is the majority of that for you, the focus kind of to be on Jarama or is there kind of a few, uh, like a few different places that you want to put your time? Yes. Um, when I'm outside football, but I spend time with my family and kids, uh, but in terms of businesses uh, or charity. So we try to uh my wife and me are working on different kind of projects also. Uh, one should start, inshallah, in front in September. Uh, then we've got another project um, here in UK uh, with the brother Ebadu, inshallah. And we've got the charity. So that's the three main projects we're working on. Uh, I also have got a partner uh, in, in marketing. We, we are doing a, a kind of project, but it's a bit like a, I cannot talk about it uh, now. Uh, but yes, yes, we try to keep ourselves busy and to make sure like we uh, we keep our brain moving. So we learn, we learn every day, uh, surrounding ourselves with uh, smarter people than us to make sure uh, we keep improving, you know. 100 percent that's the way that's the way to do it man and uh the, mm. the fact that you're kind of uh trying to surround yourself constantly around people who are uh smart or in different fields and you're you're constantly reading and uh, and and it sounds like you got your focus on man you're, you're definitely someone that uh, i look up to man the you know when we met um those months back uh i remember going back to back home to my missus and i was saying that subhanallah the the, the, the guy i the the brother i just met it's like he's it's the t- is you i think you represent yourself very well and um it's important as a muslim as we know to have izza right and to have like honor and uh, whilst having like arrogance and pride is 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 bad having honor and respect is good in islam and and it's it's hard to get that balance right and you don't often meet people who don't have pride but do have Honor, it's because it, it, it's such Honor. a thin line, and um, and so I, I I really saw that in you, man, and it was so inspiring, and 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 I, I felt like I, I I walked away from that event with like a new older brother, so I I, I really appreciate, <laughs> it. I, I, and I think that it's just like your general your general vibe that you give off. Yeah, but I try to be myself. You know, the thing is, the the line between ego and uh, honor is, yeah, as you said, is very thin, but. When you want to show off something, that's where your ego take the place. When you like stand for yourself, for what you, the principles and the value you've got, but you don't try to do too much of it, that's where you you stand up for honor, you know, because you don't try to show everyone what you've got or to show everyone that you're smart or to, you just be yourself and and talk with people and be open on, about everything. When you've got nothing to hide, when you show up, usually it's because you've got something to hide and you don't want to show your weakness and everything. But when you've got honor and you're fine with yourself, you don't mind to talk about your weakness. You know, we can talk about it all day. I know I've got weakness on some point and I'm fine with it because I know I've got strengths also, like, can balance the, the, the thing. And, you know, I don't see the point to be arrogant or have a big ego. Confidence is different. Confidence, like obviously, you need confidence to uh, to achieve things. Because without it, it's a bit difficult. But be yourself, you know. You don't need to hide or to show off, you know. Just to make sure you you happy with yourself, and that's why also you get happiness. 
where do you think that comes from the 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 contentment is it from understanding that your lord is allah and and therefore what he's decreed for you he's decreed for you yes i think the faith and uh, islam is a big thing because the principles and the value of islam is one of the first thing is uh, to have a good behavior so having a good behavior is like the overall like um uh, things of it is like to to be a good person and to be a good person you have to be fine with yourself and and happy with what you've got and happy with what you don't have and make sure you just like keep moving forward to uh, to spread this kind of good vibes and good energy around you and uh, and if if someone is looking at you and saying ah I don't know this guy but I like the way he behave and I like who he is I'm very happy with it because that means the, the 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 light around me is like shining and and people want to get to know me and because because of my behavior not because of with what I've got so that that's that's what's important for me and I think yeah, Islam is a big part of it obviously because it keeps you grounded and 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 the the, the main goal is to get the jannah so you have to be behave well to get there you know what so alhamdulillah I, I try to also teach myself every day about the Islam Quran reading. I read every day about it, and uh, even if it's two, three pages, but like, you, you keep moving forward. That's important, step by step. It's a long journey, you know. You cannot like just overnight have a, like a big, big change in your life, step by step. Even for the brothers, you know, we mentioned earlier that uh, uh, um, start to have money and start to enjoy mm-hmm. it and be famous. Then you come back to Islam step by step. Don't try to come back suddenly, you know, because I know some brothers who like convert themselves become Muslim and they try to become from black to white but the problem is they say they stay white for two months and then they go back to black because they do not like they didn't get the, the lifestyle that's something you you have to do step by step and and step by step you become who you want to become and then you find with it you know how do you how have you dealt with uh, negativity and how do you like generally deal with it because uh, uh, you, with having kind of such a um, almost like a stoic demeanor um, I can't imagine you being someone who if if for example you've had to deal with negativity kind of on and, on and off the pitch that you would deal with it erratically uh, how, how, do, how do you do how do you deal with it so when I was younger uh, the critics hurt me a lot you know, uh, the journalists or the people or the fans, you know, just like getting mad because you had the bad games or something or just because they don't like your style, you know. Uh, and now with social media, it's even getting worse. So I, w- I was hurt by this and uh, sometimes I was, re- I was reacting the wrong way. So when you get older and you start to realize that uh, it's just noise behind your head and just like don't pay attention to it. Uh, what is important is the noise you keep uh, uh, you keep uh, around you and the people surrounding yourself. I'm not saying you don't you take only people uh, yes yes man, but you need people telling you telling you the truth, not uh, not just like what they think or or what they like or you know the fans. Obviously, the fans are a big part in football, and now with the social media, they think they've got big voice. But with all the respect I've got for the fans. Uh, most of them don't know anything about football. Most of them don't know anything about what the real industry of football. They just get like the emotions. Emotions uh, take the part of it and they just talk about, I, I don't like this guy. And then they talk, start to talk about the family and everything. But just, but just they, they, what they think, you know. So don't, don't pay too much attention to it and, and be focused on... Yeah, come on. I was gonna say, do you think a bit a part of it is is remaining private because you seem to live quite a private life in terms of social media? Yeah, exactly. But it's up to you. If 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 you want to show your life, show your kids, show your wife, show your family, show what you do, what you go on holiday, anything, you have to accept that you get the critics of it. It's part of your life because you show people. Obviously, gonna get the critics. I'm not a big guy on social media. Uh, what I show is about football or charity or what I do because obviously you can. It's it's good to show like a good thing that like if if can bring people on board or people like uh, looking at you and think you're doing the good stuff. I think that's a good platform to use. Uh, but then the, my private life, I keep it private. So it's 
also to make sure they're not like touched by this. And uh, if something has to be like hurt, it's gonna be me, and I know I cover them. Um, so yeah, it's 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 part of the football life, the critic uh, from the manager, from the club, from the fans, from the people, from the family. It's part of the football life. You just need to know who you are and where you want to go, and and uh, listen the voice, and you know that put the rest away. Well, listen, Rudy, I, I really appreciate you taking time out uh, for me. I, I know that we, we said we'd try and keep it um, short, so I, I really appreciate you giving me your time. Um, like I said, I, I think no that problem. you're a huge role model for Muslims and uh, for people in general with kind of how you how you hold yourself. And, and uh, I hope that perhaps we can um, do this again in person uh, sometime, perhaps over in France um, when, you're, when you're there. But um, I, I, I do wish you all the best, inshallah, with everything that you do. And, um, and if anybody who is watching this uh, wants to go ahead and uh, donate and support the cause of uh, Jarama with the um, orphanage in Benign, you can do so by clicking the link. I'm going to put it in our bio, um, so you can you can do that too. Thank you so much, Rudy, man. Thank you very much. Thank you.